Alrighty, my friends, we're going to drive the equation for PV work, and PV work is pressure volume work, pressure volume work, and go over some common exam problems as well, and I'm going to show you some pitfalls that often come up in this, this uh, equation uh, that, that your prof or your teacher may not have told you. Hopefully they have and they, they know about it quite well, but if not, I'm going to describe it here. Now, many people will say that work is force times distance. Oh, and this is geared towards a general chemistry class, so no calculus in this video. Uh, work is force times distance. Now, this is not totally correct. It's not totally correct. You got to have the right sign. So, uh, unless you know that force is going to be opposite, you need a negative sign here. And I'm going to explain that. So, work equals negative force times distance. And that's because this force. This isn't the force that you're applying, like you're pushing on something or that you're lifting. This is the opposing force. And this is very important uh, if you want to get your signs right. Right. This is the, uh, let's we'll say force, force. This is the opposing force right here. So let's say we have a gas and our gas is in a piston here. It's fitted with a piston and a container fitted with a piston, all that kind of stuff. And we've got some gas in here. And this gas is applying a force. Let's say we heat it up, right? We, we, we put some fire down here, we heat the gas up and the gas gets hotter, moves faster, it pushes against the, the a piston harder with more collisions. So it pushes it up, it's applying a force, but the work that it does is not the force that it applies. The work that it does is the force that it's pushing against. And the, what's holding this piston down is an opposite force due to the pressure of the atmosphere. And pressure is a force. Pressure is a force. It took me a while to know this, but <laughs> embarrassingly long. Uh, but pressure is a force. It's a force per unit area. Okay, It's not the whole force, uh, just for every given area. And the, the work here is this opposing force. So it's going to be the opposing force of the outside or the external pressure. So if we solve for force here, force equals pressure times the area, and we'll plug this into our equation, negative, and notice why it's negative now. So negative is because we're moving the piston and say piston's going up, right? Piston's going up and say it goes to here. Piston goes to here, for instance, I'll, I'll get rid of these to make it a little bit more clear. Uh, piston goes up so that this is our D, here, this is our D and it's going up, but the force is pushing down, right? The force is pushing down. So either you got to have this negative here or you got to remember that force is inherently negative uh, when, when it's in the work equation. Okay, so this would be P. Now in our case, this is going to be the external pressure times the area. This is our force times the distance. Okay. Now, in this case, this is the external pressure, right? ATM, oh, I'll, I'll write ATM so it's consistent. Same thing, external pressure, atmospheric pressure. In this case, it's the same thing. Uh, and this is, this is supposed to be an area here. Now here we have constant pressure. So the pressure is not changing because this is just happening and the pressure outside is not changing, we're assuming. So that's very important to, to note that this is constant pressure. Okay, so this is negative pressure of the external pressure, ATM. Uh, times area times the distance. Now, area times the distance is the volume. Because if we imagine you have a cylinder and the cylinder has some area A, right? And it gets moved through some distance D. Distance D here. Well, area times D, that's the volume of the cylinder. That's the volume that the piston moves. So that's the volume that the gas expands by. So this is negative P ATM times the change in volume. Or if we want to generalize it a little bit more, to give ourselves some room, equals the negative pressure times the change in volume. That's our work equation. Now remember that this pressure is the opposing pressure, the external pressure, not the pressure of the system. So we should say it's external. And remember this negative sign has to be here because we're opposing it. And pressure, we don't have negative pressure values that we plug in. We usually have like a positive number for the magnitude of the pressure, but this negative just shows the sign of the force. 
All right, let's have our first exam problem here. This is an easy one, but there's an important thing about units we should talk about. Uh, calculate the work done in joules. When an ideal gas expands from 0.25 meters cubed to 1.0 meters cubed at a constant pressure of 110 kilopascals. So we have pressure, we have this changing volume here. We want to know the work done. So we're going to use the equation that we just derived. Uh, work equals negative P. This is the external pressure, but since the pressure is constant, we're going to consider this pressure here. Uh, it's okay to do that, times the change in volume. Now, pressure needs to be in pascals, no matter what they give you, uh, unless you know the conversion. And one pascal equals one newton per meters, per, whoop, not meters, cube, meters squared. This is kind of our, our conversion, conversion, it's what a pascal is. Uh, so we're gonna plug this in, negative 110. Now, kila means a thousand, so times 10 to the three, that's what this K means, 10 to the three. Uh, pascals times the change in volume. Now, the change in volume is volume final minus volume and, oops, final, fi final initial. Final volume is 1.0 meters cubed minus 0.25 meters cubed. It's good to always write the units in here. And see this Pascal, we're in Pascals and we gotta be in meters cubed for, for volume. Uh, because Pascal, I'm going to take it out, is a Newton per meter squared. I'm going to take it out just so we can see how it works. Okay, so we'll plug this into our calculator. Negative 110 times 10 to the power of 3 times um, 1.0 minus 0 0.25, which is just 0.75. Oh, what's going on here? That's weird. You know, I love these calculators because you can see what you type. Uh, let's try again. Negative 110. See, if I didn't, if I couldn't see what I was typing, like those one-line calculators, I would have got this one wrong. Times 0.75. I can kind of do that one in my head. Equals negative 82,500. Okay, so that's a big number. Negative 82,500. Pascals are a relatively small unit, so we do see these big, big numbers. Now here we have a Newton. So Newtons are here. Meters squared cancels out with these meters cubed to just give us meters. And this is me Newton meters. So negative eight, two, five, zero, zero Newton meters. And what's a Newton meter? Well, work is force times distance. Remember, force is in Newtons and distance is in meters. And work is always, in, it was usually in joules. So a joule is a Newton meter, a Newton meter here. So this is this here, Newton meters. You give 82,500 to uh, two sig figs, unfortunately. There we go. So negative 82,000 joules. It's negative. What does that mean? Well, the gas is expanding, right? And this is very important to talk about uh, because we need to know where the energy is going. Well, if we're expanding, the gas here is expanding, then it's doing work. It's doing work, so it's using energy in the form of work. So it's transferring its energy as work into the surroundings. That means the system is losing energy. It's losing energy by pushing on the piston. Since the system is losing energy, work is negative. Negative means the energy is lost by the system. How much work is done when a gas is compressed from 1.500 liters to 1.250 liters under a constant pressure of this here now same thing actually there'll be one more exam problem <laughs> i can't resist uh, uh work equals negative p i just just thought of one uh right now uh that 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 i saw uh, uh just last week so uh, i want to give you that type of question okay so negative p now it's constant pressure so we can plug this in negative 790 millimeters of mercury now we're not in in pascals right so that's a problem, so we need to convert it, which is okay. You should be given an, uh, a, a conversion sheet uh, to convert millimeters of mercury to pascals. And on the conversion sheet, we have one pascal is the same as 750.1 millimeters of mercury. So millimeters of mercury cancel out, we're left with pascals. Now we want this change in volume and we have liters. So that's another problem, unfortunately. Uh, our, our final is 1.250 liters. 
minus 1.500 liters. So that's what we're starting off with. Now we have liters. We don't want liters. We want meters cubed. And again, another conversion. This might be given to you, uh, or I'll just just kind of write it out. If you if you don't know how to get this conversion, there's a thousand liters in one meters cubed. Uh, let me know in the comments, and I can just write a note on on how I got this conversion. Uh, but there we go. And this will because we're in Pascal's. Oh, wrong way around. See that? Look at this. Liters in the top. Liters on the top here. Meters cubed. Liters doesn't cancel out, does it? We got to flip this. We got my units the wrong way. We have a thousand liters for every one meters cubed there now our liters cancel out so we're left with uh, pascal meters cubed which is just the jewel okay now we'll plug this in and negative 790 divided by 750.1 times bracket 1.250 minus 1.5 close bracket divided by a thousand does this look good uh, yeah, I think that's good. Okay, very small number. <laughs> uh, let's see here. One, two, three, four. 2.63 times 10 to the negative four. 2.63 times 10 to the negative four. And remember we're in joules as before. We have, well, technically this is two sig figs. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll say it's two sig figs here, but we'll write the whole thing. Okay, and this is a positive number, right? Positive number, which means work is done on the system. Positive means the system gains energy. The system gains energy. So if we have a cylinder like a gas with a cylinder, and we have this gas here, and we how does this gain energy? Well, we push the cylinder down, so we compress it. See, we're going from 1.5 to 1.25, so we're getting smaller. By, uh, by pushing it down, we're compressing the gas and we're putting energy into the gas. That's why this is positive here. All right, last one here. Might be a little bit tricky, uh, but I'm gonna break it down and make it nice and easy. This is definitely uh, an exam problem that came up. Uh, how much work is done when the temperature of 2.5 moles of an ideal gas is increased from, now we have this temperature change, 298 Kelvin to 300. 98 Kelvin, so 100 degrees difference, uh, under a constant pressure of 105 kilopascals. Well, let's start off with, let's write what we have. We have N, we have moles, we have a T initial, we have a T final, and we have a pressure that's constant. Okay, so these are our variables that we have. Now we'll jump to the equation. Work is negative P, this is the external pressure or constant pressure, times the change in volume. Now, unfortunately, we don't know the change in volume here. All we have is the pressure. We're given other things that we don't have in the equation. <laughs> um, but that's okay. Let's not panic because we do know we have an ideal gas. And an ideal gas obeys the equation PV equals nRT. So volume equals nRT over P over the pressure. And if we have this change in pressure, this is pressure final minus, pre or sorry, uh, volume final minus volume initial. So if change in volume equals V final minus V initial, then we have a V final and NRT over P for V final, NRT over P for, for final, because that's the same as the V here. See that? This is supposed to be an, an F. Uh, minus, not equals minus NRT over P initially, NRT over P initially. Okay, uh, now we have a few things in common. N doesn't change, so N is constant. We can factor that out. We can factor out the R and we can factor out the P because P is constant here, P is constant. So we can factor out NR over P and we're left with T final minus T initial. And that's our change in volume in all its glory. So we can literally plug this into here. We can plug this in right into there. And work equals negative P. Now the change in volume is this stuff. N R over P. I'll make this a square bracket. Times temperature final minus temperature initial. I'm sorry if this is small temperature final minus temperature initial. Well, look at this, the P's cancel out. So we actually 
doesn't matter what the what the pressure is. The pressure actually doesn't matter at all. It cancels out. Pressure here and here cancels. And our work is equal to negative RT, technically change in T. Negative RT, change in T. Well, oh, that's our equation. That's not our final answer. <laughs> this is another equation you might want to have in your back pocket, though. Uh, but we'll just plug it in. So negative, how many moles are there? 2.5? 2.5 moles. 2.5 moles. And R is, now we want to choose the right R. So I'm going to choose 8.134 joules per mole Kelvin, that one, because I want it to cancel out with moles and I want it to cancel out with Kelvin. Temperature, it's going from 398 so to 298. I'll, I'll just do this right here. The change in temperature equals final, which is 398 minus initial, which is 298 Kelvin which is, hopefully we can do this without a calculator, 100 Kelvin, 100 Kelvin. Okay, so we'll plug this into our calculator, and we have negative 2.5 times 8.134 times 1,000, and negative 20 20,335, so negative 2335 joules, and there's two sig figs, so basically 2.0 times 10 to the 3, uh, negative 2.0 times 10 to the 3 joules. Now this is negative because the gas is losing energy. It's losing energy. So if we have a fire here underneath the gas and our gas particles are here and they're pushing on, oh, they're pushing on the piston and they're pushing the piston up against the opposing pressure then the gas is losing energy because it's applying a force. It's applying yeah, work kind of transfer of energy here. That's why it's negative. Now, why does the pressure cancel out? Well, we didn't define the volume, right? So we only define the temperature. So if the pressure was higher, then the volume wouldn't be uh, as great, right? The, the pressure would matter. If we look at our other equation, the one that we derived, negative P delta V for constant pressure. If the pressure is really high, this opposing pressure, if that's really high, then the volume is going to be lower uh, compared to the temperature than these. If this is even harder to see, let me equate these two. So this work with this equation has to be the same as this. So negative P delta V has to be equal to negative R delta T right? Because this is one way of saying what work is. This is the other word in saying, so they're equal to each other. I'll just get rid of these negative signs because they cancel out. So if these are equivalent, if we have a higher pressure, then the volume has to be less, the change in volume. You can't push it as far if it's pushing against a greater force. So if pressure is high, the, the change in volume is lower, just like, just like what we have here. So this change in temperature, if there's the high change in temperature, then we're going to be able to change over a greater volume. But if the change in temperature is not as great and the pressure is very high, then the volume won't be able to go as high. Anyways, there we go. There's some exam problems. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope these derivations helped and we went through the units. If there's any other sticky things that came up on, exam, on an exam for these type of questions, let me know and I'd be happy to make a video about it as well. Uh, check out my other videos. I got tons of ones on thermodynamics and also in other chemistry, uh, areas of chemistry, physics and math and whatnot, uh, calculus. So thanks again for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.